I was always being yelled at by my teachers to play in rhythm when I was a little kid. And then many years later, I got all kinds of lessons trying to undo all the strictness uh, of, my, of my youth. And it can be very confusing. It does seem to me interesting in, in classical music, especially because, you know, we, the paradigm for classical, we, we, we play from the score, right? We play from written music. And on the musical page, it appears that the rhythms are written very precisely, right? But... Um, What's interesting is, suppose you get your computer to play exactly the rhythms that are written on the page. Uh, it sounds pretty terrible. And it's only when humans get involved and they start making all kinds of little quote unquote mistakes. You know, one note a little bit earlier, one note a little bit later, depending on how you feel about the notes, you know, and you're constantly leaving these little fingerprints around the music, around the rhythm, shading around it. And, and it's only when you start making all these mistakes around the rhythm that you have a success, that the music comes alive. The, the real, what you perform is so different in, in so many ways from what's written. It is what's written, but it's also completely not. This element of, of um, it, it's also really powerful to see, you know, for example, when my friends go dancing in a club, for example, you see how the beat of, of certain popular music um, allows them a certain freedom to release something. <laughs> so rhythm has this powerful element of structure right? and discipline, and then also it, it enables you this incredible freedom. And so a lot of my book is exploring that, that element, you know, the simplest rhythmic qualities and how they, and how they activate all those different ideas.